Um, my question is around time frame, the 2035 to 2037 period that the Coalition have put together, uh, which seems to be, from our previous hearings that we've already had, seems to be very unrealistic. Um, can you can you run with us here, please, and let us know if the Coalition were to win the next federal election, it would spend the next two and a half years, essentially the whole term, on community consultation and site studies for its nuclear program. Do you think this is a reasonable first step? And if we can keep these answers short, please, because we are definitely running out of time. We have an excellent regulator in the form of IPANZA. You would have to increase the people at IPANZA to world-class regulator, way better than the NRC, and I've got the highest regard for them. Uh, as no is a world-class regulator for the security. You can beef up that regulatory structure in six months. That regulatory structure is very different, though, from it's exactly the, the same. current one that we have. It is to absolutely no difference. It's exactly the same. That, that, it, okay. it is a furphy to say that the regulator, Ipanza, could not do that job. They are globally respected. I didn't say they couldn't do the job, Dr Patterson. I did not say I, that at all. I, what did you say? So what I did question. say was I said that they're two very different uh, different things. No, they're not. Small... They are both nuclear reactors. Yes, very different sizes, though, aren't they? And there's, it, also size, state regu there's also state regulations Chair, that they've got to go through. Response, uh, you're, you're With the greatest respect, to get response. Chair, there is no difference between the size. The risk is not related to size. The risk is related to security, safeguards and safety, okay? Yep. The safety of modern three plus, generation three plus nuclear plants is absolutely assured. They have been licensed around the world. If credit is given through the international licensing agencies for the licensing that has already happened to the plants that are being built, does Australia need to do it again? Is there something about the Southern Hemisphere that we don't know? When we took licensing of aircraft and we generalised it to single licensing of aircraft internationally, it reduced the cost of air travel. It was done much more rapidly. Our travel today is based on mutual recognition between respected regulators in free countries that are democratic. We are not free in respect to, to, to nuclear. And so with the greatest respect to your view that this will take a long time, if we recognise others who have done this work to the gold standard that's been established all around the world, we don't have to do the re-regulation in order to persuade ourselves that the laws of physics are different in Australia. They are identical. Okay. So let, with, with going with that, right, let's say it's 2028 and a site has been selected. How long would it take for the studies and the preparation and planning and documents to pass through the planning process, including objections? to run to international tender for construction, to sign the contract and arrange finance, to start mobilisation and site and complete all civil works required for construction and then to build the actual reactor and then to commission the reactor. How long do you think that would take? It would take about three years longer than it took for the Opal reactor. The Opal and how reactor, long was the Opal reactor? That was eight years. Eight years? So and you're saying you it would three. take 11 years to do? Yeah, which is yep. about as fast um, as, as the current process if it was probably regulated and ecologically controlled for a wind turbine. Okay, uh, for a, you know, a row of them. Yep. But the problem with the wind turbines is they're only available two days a week. The problem with the solar panels is they're only available one day a week. So why do What you are say... you going to do about the problem of 100% electricity for Aussies all the time at a reasonable cost? It cannot be done. I've told you about Rydell's work. We know from the published engineering literature, my sense of urgency is that whatever people say about renewables is true. They can do certain things, but they cannot provide, uh, under the AEMO plan, reliable electricity to Australians. We have a plan that will fail. If we allow our engineers to work on a proper plan when the bans have been lifted, who would, who would do a, a career in nuclear in Australia at the moment? Can I just ask you, Dr Patterson, uh, if we go to Czechia, for instance, it's taken 16 years from tender to commercial operation for their plant to be done there, and they've been in the nuclear industry for 66 years. Yep. So that's 16 years for a group that has been involved in it for a long time. And let's go, to, let's go to a new one where they didn't have nuclear to start with, which is over at the UAE. They, they had 15 years and they got theirs through in that time. How would Australia get one through in that period of time, considering we don't have the workforce, 
considering we don't have all of the uh, experience that Czechia had, for instance, and we also don't have... We have also health and safety measures for our workforce that the UAE currently don't have in yeah. around what happens to their workforce. How could we get it done in that time frame? Yeah. So I'll start with the UAE. Uh, the UAE... If we could just be quick on this, please, because yep. we've only got two minutes left, and then that's it. So Your UAE, question went for about uh, that long, Chair. I think we should give him enough time to answer the question yeah. comprehensively. Uh, is it, well, very, very good questions, and I, I really appreciate the, the chance to answer them. In, in the case of the UAE... They started from a zero base. They had no nuclear capacity in the country and they needed to uh, build up that workforce and that workforce had to do the job uh, effectively. They went from not having a regulator, not having any infrastructure, and they set themselves what they called the gold standard. They would meet all the international requirements fully and do it uh, in a period of time. So if you take the setup that we wouldn't have to do, which is established regulators do all of that sort of stuff, which they still had to do. They had pass all those laws. Then you take the period that it actually took from first concrete to first electrons, OK? That, if you count it, depending if you use the US system or the UK system, that was either 12 years or eight years. So from a standing start, they built Korean uh, APR 14,000 plants with a workforce which they saw sourced internationally, including a whole bunch of Aussies, put them together, turned them into a machine to make nuclear reactors, and did it in that period of time. We need about the same set of skills and the same number of people just to build the grid that we have to build. The question is, how long will it take us to build the grid? If we take the people who would be employed in building the grid and give them really interesting jobs, building nuclear power plants where you don't have to go out and run up and down a new grid, where you can be close to the grid, you can get skills that you can take for the second plant and the third plant, and you have an integrated plan with everybody working together, it would be an absolute wonderful thing to do. Secondly, Chechia is really interesting. They still make cars. They understand the value of energy density. They are a small country which is highly technical. Why did it take them so long? They've got an incredible population density. Their challenge is finding a place where you can put up a plant where you can actually not bump into a whole lot of people. If you look at Chechia, the remarkable thing about them was because they decided to do it, it took a bit longer to get the social license on the ground, but because they have all of the technical capabilities in their economy, they didn't have to bring anybody in to do it. So remember that these timescales you're talking about is two battery life cycles. Batteries last 9.8 years. You have to replace them every 10 years. I'm a battery expert. So every battery we build in this country that is apparently cheap is going to save our lives is going to be replaced every 10 years. What does that do to our workforce? What does that do to our economics? If we don't go for the best energy with the lowest carbon, with the highest reliability in the world, if we maintain the bands, I say simply to you, Lift the bands, create an enabling environment, let the market do its work, and create the labour force that will benefit from working at the cutting edge of the next generation of technology for hundreds of millions of people around the world who need Australia to be the place that takes our nuclear energy into their developing nations. Thank you, Dr. Patterson. So you're saying that we can build just yes or no answer. This one, please. You're saying that we could build seven nuclear power plants within 11 years in this country. If you and I sat in a room and planned it, we could do it. Thank you, Dr. Patterson.